All right, Maxime Rooney, welcome to the podcast, mate. How are you? Thanks, I'm great. How are you doing? It's good to good. be here. Yeah, doing really well. Uh, don't know too many Maximes. It's a, it's a pretty unique name, hey? <laughs> yeah, so my mom, um, she's, she's Belgian. Um, my dad, he's Filipino. And when they were su- searching for names, they wanted French names. So I'm Maxime. My middle brother, his name is Adrian. And my youngest brother, his name is Olivier. So my mom wanted all French names. Oh, very cool. So three boys, hey? Yeah, I mean, growing up, we're all super competitive. Um, <clears throat> we had a pool in our backyard, so obviously, like, we we needed to be water safe. Um, but love them, still super close to them. Um, my youngest brother, he's actually in California. He goes to San Jose State, and then my brother, other brother, currently lives with me, and it's it's awesome. I love living with him, love spending time with him, and um, yeah, they're just great support system, and I love them. So awesome. What part of the country did you grow up in? I grew up in California, so about 45 minutes east of San Francisco, so like East Bay Area, um, Pleasanton, Livermore, is Tri-Valley County, um, or Alameda County and Tri-Valley area. So. Did, they, did your parents put the pool in, or did it, did it come with the house? It came with the house, and it's actually kind of funny because um, so it used to be indoor, and it was a little bit like a crummy indoor. It was like really old school, and so they removed it, and we had an outdoor pool. Um, but hot summers, just jump in the pool with my pops and uh, it just, it was a good time to cool off and a great way to kill like five-year-old energy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm the same, man. I grew up with a pool in our backyard and we just had fun, man. Like I can remember um, doing my, my first hypoxic sets, just uh, my brother holding my head underwater, you know, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like with brothers, you know, just trying to yeah. kill each other in the pool. So absolutely that's fun <laughs> yeah so is that how it started for you it was just more of just fun and then did you realize you either enjoyed it or had some talent for it how did it progress yeah so i mean i just uh, originally definitely wanted to be water safe um because we had the pool in our backyard and like if we ever fell and we just needed to float kind of be able to breathe and everything and um i so when i was five years old i went to my local um summer league team it's called the fireballs i think it's still called still called the fireballs and um sorry if you hear in the background Talk there might be some noise but um i uh swim five to eight years old summer league team and then they recommended me to go to a year-round team if i wanted to really improve and wanted to commit and luckily for me um the pleasanton seahawks was just 10 minutes away and kind of rose through those ranks went through like my intermediate groups to my senior to my senior elite and um my longtime club coach, Steve Morsilli, he's still my, I, I call him my coach for life because uh, we just have a great partnership and he's helped me through lots of like the transitions throughout the last couple of years. And um, I think he really helped me understand what it's going to take to be elite and get me to the level I wanted to be and prepare me for college and beyond. So um, I was really, I, I consider myself very blessed to have, because um, they're also a gold medal club for multiple years now. Um, and so he, he definitely knows what he's doing. He produces multiple um junior national athletes national athletes and um at the time um he's had a lot of junior national team members and even national team members so like selena lee um catherine Bree, nick silverthorne allison brown like those types of names and they all went to college like stanford to cal and they proceeded to get some best time so it really sets them up for success and um i really loved and enjoyed working with him who were your influences when you were growing up? Who, who were you chasing in, in the pool? Or who were the people that you saw come into practice and you just had your eye on them and you wanted to be like them? Give me some names, some athletes within your club. <clears throat> Definitely. So I was a, a little bit of a unique case because I think when I moved up to his group, and when I say his group, is Coach Steve Morsilli. Um, I was in, I think, eighth grade. That's when I started to really – tackling the nine practices a week, doing doubles. And uh, I was just chasing all the seniors. So Mm -hmm. I was like this young kid. I'm like, well, I want to race you. I want to win in practice. And so I guys like, um, I mean, Andrew Seitz, he's no longer a swimmer, but um, I think two or three grades ahead of me, like Jason Chen, Tony Shen, um, and all those guys are just like some of my really good buddies still. And um, they just really helped me progress. And I, had them to look up to and give me a lot of tips. I learned a ton, just what it means to, to race tough. And I think probably one of my biggest role models, and she gave me lots of advice because I wanted to be at the national team level was Selena Lee. Um, at the, she, she was sixth or seventh in the 200 IM at 
2012 Olympic trials. Mm -hmm. And, um, she gave me, she was probably the best mentor in regards to chasing my goals, how I'm going to get there. Um, the mindset that I need to have and just doing the things in practice. Like, uh, I, so one of the things about me too, is I have a really good memory. Um, so I'll remember practices that I did. I still remember practices that I did in high school. Um, Mm -hmm. and I remember one particular, um, moment with her at the wall we were doing a set of 20 25s um it was a little bit of easy fast some smooth strong fly work and she's like i'm gonna go all these no breaths you should join me and i was like oh wow like this is this is what it's gonna take like okay taking the extra step taking the extra mile um doing the right things to make you better wow Uh, that's cool to have people like that around you and in your corner and kind of you know, pressing you and challenging you that way. And, and it's cool. That was, that was a female as well. You know, most of us, mm-hmm. you know, attached to another male figure, but Selena is uh, obviously an incredible uh, person. I, I know her pretty well too. And, and that's cool that you had her there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, on the guys and like, I would say Tony Shen, Jason Chen, Nick Silverthorne, Nick Johnson, they all helped me focus on different aspects. So like whether it be my underwaters or backstroke. Cause I actually, when I was growing up, I used, I was a predominantly a backstroker. Mm. Um, I started swimming backstroke and I actually made, um, I think my first, like I was selected for the national select camp for my 200 backstroke. Um, I still think I have a good backstroke. I just use it more as an aerobic kind of test to see where, where I'm at, see how my legs are in shape, see kind of my body position in the water. So um, <clears throat> they all like, challenged me in practice um whether it be the like range events or sprint events um and they just kept me really honest and helped me give my best every day when you look back on that time period you obviously had people around you you know um maybe you weren't even the best on on your team at that point in time but what do you think separated you at that point how did you get to where you are today just looking back on that period um, so right off the back, I would say, I think one thing that separates me, um, separates, separated me then and separates me now, um, is my food, my diet. Um, my mom, um, and this is a huge shout out to her. I think she definitely raised me very well, um, and healthy in regards to like, I definitely eat all my fruits and veggies. Um, I'm fueled right for practice. Um, and I'm fueled very lean, um, and ready to go. And so I'm, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I think that's, that, that's something that's definitely, I mean, we're, we're still learning about the nutritious aspect of things in sport, but that's something that I think I definitely have a good handle on that's still helping me today. Mm. Um, and I'm still making, of course, like as my body changes, as I'm getting older, I'm still making adjustments for myself now. Um, but at least I have the knowledge base of which to go off of. Um, so that's one thing. And that's a big, that's a big shout out to my mom because um, she established that foundation. Um, the next thing I would say is, um, I, I think because of my brothers, um, just growing up, I have two younger brothers. We're all very competitive. This is how it was. So like when I was six years old, um, in the six and under age group for summer league, I would break the records first. <laughs> and then my youngest, my middle brother, he would break the records. And then my youngest brother would break his records. Right. <laughs> so and the same, the same happened for seven to eight years old, you know? And so I was like, they're just so lucky that like I did it first. Right. And then they get to break it. And so I think it just really was like, well, like I want to really set the bar and get moving. And uh, I think definitely um, when I, when I became more serious. So when I was in the senior league group with Steve, he, um, he, he was very goal oriented like me and I like shooting my goals really high. And so we set those plans to attain those goals. Um, and I think like we had a really great partnership where I trusted him and he trusted me to do the work and I trusted him to give me the correct things to do with the things to focus on. And so that I think level of focus, diligence, attention to detail helped me really progress. It's interesting. You talk about position in, in the family and, and you're the eldest brother. Do you feel responsibility or, or how do you view your position in the family as, as opposed to your younger siblings? Mm. Um, <clears throat> I think like as an older brother, um, uh, being, and also being a firstborn, there's a, there's like that kind of awkward ground where it's like, okay, you, well, you're, you're still your parents firstborn. So you're going through everything first. They're, mm. the, you're the, you're the one who made them a parent pretty mm. much. Mm. And so they're still learning with you. Um, but I think 
for me as an older brother, like I definitely, I try to encourage them as best I can. Um, tell, tell them when they're out of line. <laughs> I still do that with my brother, like tell him to clean his dishes and stuff. Um, but, um, the main thing is just, um, understanding that they, they also have their own paths. And while like I may be doing something differently, they may be doing it in a different way and just encouraging them in their own pursuits as well. Yeah. Very cool, man. So now listen, you had some success as, as a youth at a pretty high level at the, at the world youth championships. Um, how did you get to that point? Let, let's first of all, talk about that. How did you get to becoming one of the fastest swimmers in the world for your age at that point? Yeah. So, um, so that meet, that was in 2015. And I actually remember the summer pretty vividly because, um, I made a conscious decision about the things that I wanted to chase after. So my coach and I, we set up a plan um, in 2013 or 2014, right after I came back from the national select camp. And I told them in 2014, I want to make the, the junior team. In 2015, I want to make the junior team again. I want to make the national team. And I also want to make the national, I mean, the, the, the world junior championship team. And so we had a three-part plan that summer. And I was like, okay, what do I need to do to get there? And um, of course, nine practice a week, doing, doing my dry lands, giving my best every day. Um, but I remember that summer, I came in probably 45 minutes early every day, um, partially to put my sunscreen on because uh, that, that's, uh, I was, uh, I get tan very easily and my parents, um, they just want me to be protected. And so I put my sunscreen on and then I would hop in the pool and do an extra 500 to 1,000, just working on technique work, being really clean in the water. And I think that's still an emphasis that I put on today. Um, it's just like, my first thousand of practice, um, it's usually, I mean, usually warm up and I just want to focus on being very clean, um, focusing on my flip turns, just those extra details so that when I really get going and cooking during the main set, all of that would transfer over. Um, so that's, that was one of my focuses, um, heading into nationals that summer. And so nationals was in San Antonio in 2015. Um, the week before I actually had junior nationals. So this was the first really the first time where I raced two weeks in a row um, like that. And um, I had a great juniors, but we knew I was going to be faster at nationals just because of more rests, more preparation. Um, and of course I get an opportunity to correct the things at junior nationals at nationals. And so um, <clears throat> my, my first national title came in 2015 at nationals and I went 147, 10 in that 200 free. And I remember I was like in the morning, I, didn't necessarily cruise, but I was like, I really backed off and I mm. want that 148. And I'm like, coach, like, I think I can, I can do this, you know? Um, and he's like, okay, these are your splits. This is this, you really got to move. And uh, I really still stick with the same race strategy. Um, that, uh, so obviously like I make a couple adjustments here and there, but, um, we, we talked about it and all I, I, I remember visualizing that afternoon and going into the finals with, uh, just kind of like an unstoppable belief that like if if I execute the best way that I can then I can do this and mm -hmm. so um which is going to lead me to my quote that probably really um helped me throughout the years it's just uh my my coach he uh he says I uh, believe you belong and I actually uh, have that reminder in my room and um I think that at this level you know everyone has the physical talent they put the work in the pool. We put the time in, whether it be the yards or in the weight room, doing the technique work. And of course, everyone has their own individual bodies. Um, but when you really want to get to that next level, it, it's going to be all up in your mind. It's, 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 it has to be, you know, push into that next stage, you know, especially in a tuna free. I watched, by the way, your Ian Thorpe interview, and I agree with him. It's about who's going to have that toughest and hardest last 50 and can really accept that it's going to be kind of a blackout type of pain. It's going to hurt. Mm. So um, believe you belong is something that um, really, really kept me, kept me going. And um, is, I just, I've always seen, I believe that I could be at this level. Yeah. It's funny that you, you talk about that and you also talk about the world juniors and you, I know that you, you finished second to Kyle Chalmers and, and both of you have a, have a very strong belief in who you are and both of you have had success at the, junior world level and and now kind of on the international stage as well um and you also you also tell me that you you're friends with kyle um you you two you see some similarities in him and yourself and those sorts of things 
Definitely. I mean, <clears throat> so like, like I said, I think everyone at this level, we all work hard. Um, and I, he also, so I watched it and I remember him telling me in 2015, actually, that this is like one of his first years actually committing to swimming because he wanted to play footy. Right. Mm. And so I was like, oh my gosh. Also, I, <laughs> I remember uh, standing next to him at the blocks. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, this dude is a football, like a footy <laughs> player. This dude is huge. Right. And I was like, wow, I'm in this 17 year old body. And I, I, I think I was like one, 160, 170. And this guy is like solid muscle. Right. And, um, it's just, I was like, I was looking at him and I'm like, yeah, wow. Like he's, he's got the competitive edge too. He's got that killer instinct. And mm -hmm. I just, I think that's what it's going to take to be, to be here. Like no one wants to lose. Everyone wants to win. And, um, we're going to do what it takes to get there. And you two are pretty close to this day as well, right? Yeah. I text him from time to time. Um, I was like over this, over, uh, over quarantine. Cause I went back home in March, April and May, um, just to be with my family, get some school done, train a little bit. Um, but we were texting just, uh, it's like, Hey, let me add you on PS4 so I can, uh, so I can play some Warzone with you. <laughs> <laughs> Who comes out on top in the PS4? Well, <laughs> we haven't played yet, but I, cause I, I see, uh, he was telling me that he fights with his room. Oh yeah. He like fights with his roommates over controller time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine we'd be both pretty competitive there too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. Well, listen, how, what's your advice to someone who's who may be going through something similar to that to, to go from having success as a youth to then transferring that into senior success mm -hmm, of course so um and actually uh i think i'm gonna intertwine like your this question with um one of the things i learned in college so when i transferred from high school to college like so my senior year to my freshman year of high school i was thinking like okay wow like i'm going to a new program like i got to make big changes for myself but I don't know if that's necessarily correct because while yes, you're going to need to make adjustments and totally understand like, okay, well, I got to take care of myself. I'm going to college and all these things. The things that made you successful before will continue to make you successful. You just need to take it in to a higher level. And what I mean by that is like, obviously there's just like a preliminary foundation of just like, you need to work hard. But the, the things that really made me um, like, I think, really really great that summer and that um i've gotten back to this summer and previous summers was i would count my strokes like every lap and so i remember in 2015 every long course practice i would say maybe um two two fifties or two or three fifties out of the whole practice i was going 32 or 34 strokes the rest of it was all 30 strokes right and that's just because like i wanted to test my efficiency i really want to grab water you know and that's with or without paddles you know because i really wanted to maintain my stroke rate and all that so just being conscientious about my work really mm -hmm. um and just remembering that like okay i've gotten to this level these are the times I can do it again and I, I can do it better. I can do it cleaner um, or I can do it just faster. So that's kind of, that's my theory. Um, Cause I think going into college, I had a lot of new variables. So it's like the first time I was lifting and I was on my own. So I was cooking, had to take care of myself, had to feed myself, had to do my laundry, all these types of things, right. And these new factors still balance school, still work hard, you know? And I was like, okay but swimming, swimming is still swimming, you know, I can still get my best there. And so in summary, doing the things that make you successful, um, having confidence in it will continue to make you successful. Yeah. Good advice. I like that a lot. We, we try and make it too complicated. Sometimes it's just like, exactly. keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing really yeah. good stuff, especially if you've developed really good habits as a, as a youth, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I think sometimes, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids get to college and they just haven't developed the, the habits they need to develop yet, which is, and then it's, then it's a tough transition. But if you've got those habits, just keep, keep on the same line keep on the same track that you're, you're sticking to and, and progress will come based on that. Exactly. So exactly. And like, um, so on the, so there's a swimming side of things, but on the school, th on the school side of things, it's funny because when I actually gave like my brother and his friends advice, I was like, you know, the habits that you create now in high school, are they going to be the ones that you're going to like bring to college. So your study habit, if you don't study, you're not going to like, you're yeah. not going to study well in college. So really try to like hone in on what's best for you so you can be effective in college. So I, that's just in swimming in school and kind of just in life. Like, um, so I would. Hmm. Yeah, no, good advice. Now, a couple of things surprised me about your decision 
uh, for college, uh, not, not where you ended up at Florida, because I, th- I thought at the time it was a great program. It was one of my, my biggest competitors, me being in Auburn. But a couple of things surprised me. You did um, commit very early. I remember that. You committed very early, and then you also did commit to Florida, which is, you know, you're, you're growing up in California. So that surprised me as well. So what went into that decision at the time? Absolutely. So um, it was so I actually started taking like unofficial visits just with my dad to go see colleges sophomore year. We didn't talk to any coaches or anything. We just wanted to see just to get a kind of get a, a college vibe um, because my plan, again, was senior year. I wanted to be focused on the Olympics and they don't want to take too much time out of my training. So um, I looked at a school from sophomore to junior summer and then junior year, I actually took a junior day to Florida. And my dad always said, like, Maxime, like, when you're at school, like I have a really good feeling about the school because um, he also talked with, we, we got on the phone call with coach Nesty and he was like, <clears throat> um, take a deep breath when you're at the school and just see if you can see yourself there. And I think for me, um, it, basically what that meant for me was taking a deep breath, really seeing, being present and it, seeing if I can be present at the school. And what I mean by being present is just like, can I give my best? Do you think I can, can I grow here as an individual and as a swimmer, as a community member? And <clears throat> I, I remember actually where I took my breath, um, like where I like really settled down for a second to stop, close my eyes and just feel it. And I was like, yes, this is the place. And so, um, I committed and, um, that was a huge relief for me because, uh, I was actually losing sleep a little bit. Um, cause I was like putting a lot of pressure on myself. Like I really wanted to get this decision and make a decision that was best for me um, in order so I in, or, in order to focus really um, and that's why I think I had the summer that I did in 2015 and um, just training hard the whole year uh, 2016 trials didn't happen the way I wanted it to um, but we learned so much and I, I feel prepared moving forward and so I, I think that it was one of the best decisions I, I've made um, so that's I'm, I was I was happy with it. Um, in regards to sorry, uh, in regards to like the California to Florida shift, I um, I didn't really. My my dad always said uh, he, he wasn't worried about where I was going to go to college because he knew that wherever I went to college, like it was a good school. Um, in regards to its great great swimming program, great school, and so we we weren't too worried about that. And again, I wanted an opportunity to grow and. Um, Kind of crazy that I had to go all, all the way across the country to grow a lot, but I, I think it again, it's the best decision for me, and uh, I grew immensely. Yeah, good for you, man. I, it, there's, there's no regrets in, in that type of thing. Like you said, if you put time and energy into the thought process and you don't make a rash decision, you know, if you're sitting there taking deep breaths and really soaking it in, then look, you're going to live with the decision, you know, like you, mm-hmm. you know that you made the right decision at the time, and uh. I hated it because I was coaching at Auburn, so I had to coach against you for a little bit there. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> seeing you, seeing you put up some swims uh, against our team, I didn't love that, but uh, I could tell from it's, the get-go uh, that you know you knew what you were doing. I was. Uh, it's actually funny you say that because um, so Auburn versus Florida, my freshman year was in January, and uh, I remember because I raced the 200 free and I ripped like a 134 or 135, and I was like really happy with it. Um, I think I, I timed my pre-workout really well or something and I had a really good warm up. but then, uh, I actually remember my 200 back. Um, it was against Joe patching mm. and I was leading at the 175 and he flipped her and just killed me underwater. And I was like, he, I think he wrecked, he wrecked me by like a half a body length. I was like, mm. so I just remember myself really being really mad <laughs> and I'm, I'm not like, I, I don't like losing obviously, but I was just like. I had to take a couple deep breaths because I'm like, okay, you can have it. It's your senior day. It's your senior day. So, but I was, it was, it was a good meet. Joe was tough to beat at a dual meet, man. He could, he could throw down some stuff. I think he had, yeah. I think he racked up something like 200 dual meet wins in his career or something. something yeah. Like I mean, and we were also, I mean, we were in speedos and we were going, mm. I think it was like, so tuner back. We were probably, I think we were 143 or 144. Yeah. And yeah. this was like before SEC. So I was yeah. like, dang, we're kind of cooking. This might be, it's might be something good. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, listen, so what are the things that you, you took from your Florida experience? I'm not really concerned about what, what, you know, how it, how you decided to move on, but what are some of the things you took from your Florida experience? Definitely. Um, 
So my first first two years was under Troy, and I we, what was great was we were a combined program. So I actually got to work with a lot of the coaches. So coach, excuse me, um, coach coach Troy, coach Nessie, coach Steve, and coach Jeff Popple. Um, and then my third year we split, and so coach Jeff actually hired on coach Whitney to take the women's team, and then I was with coach Nesty and coach Steve. And so on the swimming side of things, I think I got to work with a lot of great great coaches. Um, I I definitely um learns i think w- what it means to work hard to another level i'm um, the florida way um and that's like i remember just like during winter training just being absolutely crushed and we were averaging maybe 15 16k a day uh, two double practices we would go double days for like a, like until we were going home and so w- what it means to work to another level um how much my body can take um what it looks like to, to recover um and I think I got a lot of great sets out of um, there because, like, for me, um, in the future, I'd like to be a coach. And so just kind of being exposed to different levels of coaching, um, different styles, um, that's something that I just I kind of store in my brain. Um, and then on the weight side of thing, I got I got to I think I got to work with one of the one of the best in the world, Matt Delancey. Um, I think largely because, um, like I said, I didn't lift before college. So. Uh, all of my strength foundation and my weights foundation came from him. And so just a huge, huge thank you to him because I learned so much in regards to taking care of my body stretching wise or just like rehab or just pre- like rehab, prehab type stuff, like what to do before the water, what to do after the water. Um, and so I just, I, I, I'll just say I learned a lot from each of them. Yeah. Well, well, that's good. I mean, it's awesome. You can take those experiences. So then you, you end up transferring to Texas and I was actually surprised. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. You had some, not only did you have immediate success, you had incredible success as soon as you went there. I think it was, it was the summer you went there over the summer, didn't you? And end up swimming like 50 point, hundred flies. I remember it was just like, Holy hell. I mean, you really <laughs> took off that first summer. So what, what actually happened that first summer? Yeah. So, okay. So, um, just kind of give a, like a timeline. So I announced I was transferring April 21st mm. and, um, it was, it was pretty quickly. I, I was, uh, so that week I actually had finals. So I had a lot of phone calls and I was still focusing on my school. Um, but I just kind of told my parents, like, I'm gonna start driving West. I'm gonna visit my friends and I'll talk to some people. Um, and luckily I had a family friend here in Texas that I was able to stay with. Um, and so I could visit the school, just see what it's like. And, um, soon enough, like I committed to Texas, um, love the guys. They kind of accepted me right away. And I, I knew a good bit of them already too. And because like the swimming world's so close and so small and, um, loved Wyatt, loved Eddie. And then we also got a new assistant coach, um, Patrick, um, <clears throat> like in July. But I think one of the differences, um, that probably was last summer for me was, um, well, <laughs> It was a a long process because I still had to, sorry, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. It was a long process because I still had to, so I had to submit an application to Mm -hmm. school. Um, I had to be admitted and I was kind of freaked out because I talked to the academic advisor and I talked to Eddie and they were like, we can't guarantee you admission. So in my mind, I was like, uh, I just like, um, I announced I'm transferring. You can't guarantee me admission, you know? (laughs) And I'm like, okay. So I was just, I was like praying really hard. And Mm -hmm. once I found out that I got in, I was like, man, thank you, God. Like (laughs) this was a blessing and it was just meant to be, you know? Um, and then I signed my NLI, but I had, so there's some complications. So I actually couldn't train with Texas, um, for a couple weeks. I, for three weeks, three or four weeks, I was actually training with TXLA. Um, I was doing five, six practices a week. And because I was doing five to six practices a week, I, that was in May. Um, because it was before I had to, I had to take summer classes in June and July so that mm. I could be eligible for the fall yeah. and the spring season. Um, as a result, I couldn't swim with the team in May. So I had to train with te- Texas um, mm. Aquatics. So, so that was a little, I got tongue tied a little bit, Sorry. but um, I think what I learned then was really making every practice count um, mm. because I was only swimming five, six times a week. And I was like, I, I want to perform <laughs> in nationals. So, um, I had great training partners with the club team. Um, and I also think like, uh, I was, since I was training with the younger guys, like I was training with Kobe Carroza and some other kids and they're like 16, 17 years old. I was like, 
I don't want to lose. So <laughs> I really just got, got my butt in gear and it was just grinding practices, but just absolutely giving my best and making the, each, each practice count. Cause again, I only had five and usually I, I have nine practices a week. Yeah. So I'm, I'm out of four. Um, and then when I got to train with the team, I think the same mentality carried over. It's like, I really want to make every practice count. Um, and then I started adding practices, still lifting weights. Um, and, um, one of the big changes that I actually made last summer was, um, I found out this, I'm half Filipino, so I'm Asian. Um, and my dad's not really, um, he's kind of lactose intolerant a little bit. And so I actually made a change in fueling. It's like, I stopped drinking milk. And I actually started using this product that is non-dairy, non-soy, non-gluten. And I felt my body completely change the way it was fueled. And so um, I had a little bit of body change there. Um, but I would say just fueling a little bit differently. I had a great community that pushed me every day and, and every set. And um, just, you know, like I said, great community. Um, and I was, you know, I was happy, ready to go. And I just wanted to give my best every day. I think that translated to giving my best at the end of the season. It's kind of like a little pre-COVID, uh, you know, preparation here, wasn't it? You're training five, it's, six it's, times a week. Honestly, it, it, that's I think that's exactly right because um, so I got I was able to be back in the pool um, around June first mm -hmm. at a club team, and we only had five to six practices a week. And um, I like I like the same thing. I was like, I want to make every practice count. And I think I've, I've made every practice count so far. We're still at six practices now. Um, I train with the pros. Um, but the same thing is like, okay, if I'm going to have one practice a day, like I can 100% just sprint everything, give my best in everything. Whether it's an aerobic set, I can push myself to the limit because I'm just going to sleep it off and I'll be able to give my best again the next day. So you, what do you see yourself as? I mean, you've, you're, a, you're a great... 100 freestyle, 200 freestyle, 100 fly. I mean, you can kind of swim everything. Where do you feel the most comfortable? Is there a particular event? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say I, um, my core four is the 100, 200 free and fly. Mm. Um, over these last couple of months, I've actually been um, pushing my backstroke a lot because, again, uh, like as, as, as I mentioned, the uh, – backstroke for me is a really good indicator of how aerobically fit I am um, because it's just it's kind of a little it's a different breathing you're, you're on your back you have to you're still engaging your lat it's really core based you got to rotate and um, I think backstroke's very leg driven as well mm. super heavy on the legs and um, and so just kind of testing myself aerobically but I recently also started I wanted to focus on um, I am as well because I um, I also thought it was another level of uh, an aerobic capacity that I can achieve. So I would say definitely my core four, but I like, I like mixing it up in practice because it keeps it interesting, keeps my muscles kind of, con I would say confused, um, which definitely gives me a, a higher benefit. Yeah. Listen, man, I've talked to many people over the years that have swum at Texas and, and there, you can't take anything away from, from, you know, Eddie's assistants, you know, Chris Kubik and, and now Wyatt, I mean, incredible assistance. But the but the end of the day, you know, Eddie Reese is the constant. He's he's the man that's been there for generations now. So what is it about Eddie? What's the special sauce that Eddie has that has made him quite possibly the the greatest coach in history for swimming? You know, um, for sure. So what is it that you see? Um, I see. So I see a couple of things. Um, first, uh, definitely, he's had some great assistance, and uh, like Eddie. Um, loves working with Wyatt and our assistant coach Patrick and I think they have great chemistry all together because I love working with them individually hmm. um, and they offer me a lot of great technique or advice and uh, I can ask any of them hey can you watch my butterfly like my spine and my butterfly to keep a good line and they're like absolutely and they all know what they're looking for because they're on the same page so hmm. I really like that um, but I'd say particularly with Eddie um, he, I, I would, <laughs> I'm going to say his special sauce is he's in a master of like uh aerobic sets um and i really like that um he's very specific whether it be okay i want you to go 160 170 heart rate or he's specific with the times he gives so for example we did a set um last week or two weeks yeah um and he was like um we're going eight ones on 105 and then 250 is easy and 850s on 45 backstroke, 250 is easy. 
and then go six, six, four, four, two, mm -hmm. two. And he tells me, okay, like hold 160, 170 heart rate, or he gives you a time. And I'll, I use, I like to do both because that means like, okay, like um, if I can go 160, 170 heart rate at this, at this time, then I'm, I'm kind of money. I'm in the perfect spot. Um, but he acknowledges that like kind of everyone's feeling different on different days. You know, he knows that like, we're all still in school. We have different workloads. We sleep differently. I mean, we're still growing. And so he takes that into consideration. And I really like um, sometimes even so for our long course practices, he gives us ranges of times to go. So mm. if um, we were going like a set of um, say four, three hundreds, uh, he would range it maybe three thirty to three forty or something because he doesn't want us to push it too hard. Or if he really wants us to crank go like three ten to three fifteen or something, just something along those lines. So it gets really specific. And I like that specificity because mm. um, I'll just, I'll make my body do it. You know, um, the next thing that I learned big time with Eddie is, um, is probably a tip that I'm going to keep for life because it's good to keep in mind as an athlete, but it's going to be good to keep in mind as a coach. But he mentioned to me, if it takes three weeks for the body to physically recover, it takes double the time for your, your neurological system to recover. Um, because we, we, we swim a lot, nine practices a week, but in combination with weights, our body is under a lot of stress, mm -hmm. you know? And so just kind of, your muscles can relax within three weeks, but you want your like kind of your neural responses and your kind of those like fast twitch muscles to be ready to fire. So it's going to take double that time. So that's a, that's another huge thing because I realized last summer, um, I took, I think I took six weeks, uh, three weeks. Um, we started coming down three weeks. I, I did singles every day. I didn't go over 3000, you know, I was really just resting my body and I'm like, Am I, am I forgetting how to swim? That's guy was like, this is like the least I've ever done in my whole life, you know? Um, because even, even as like a club, a club athlete, um, granted I didn't have as much muscle then, but even as a club athlete, I was never going really below two, two, 3000 to practice. So that's another thing. And then lastly, I think, um, Eddie, um, Eddie really created an environment at Texas where we're, we're all very competitive and we're supportive of each other. Um, his famous quote is, um, take care of yourself, take care of others, and the rest will take care of itself, you know? And so we take care of each other really well in practice. Um, and, you know, if someone wants to go, we go faster. And then we all, like, end up going we're pretty good. And, um, and saying that, going back to the time ranges that he gives us, we usually end up going a lot faster than those times. He'd be happy with us just going those times, but because of that competitive nature, you know, it starts like, okay, go, uh, go a double O on a hundred. Someone goes 59. Then the next person goes 58. And then we literally, we probably all bring it down to 53s and they're still see easy, easy hundreds. Right. So I think it's just like, we all want to get better. Um, we trust Eddie. And so it's, uh, I think it's just a great partnership with uh, my teammates and with the coaches. Good stuff, man. How does Eddie, deliver the workouts he, from what i understand he just wa walks in and kind of creates on the spot uh it's he doesn't come in with a set plan written out typed out handed out it's kind of like he'll, he'll either say it or he'll write it up on the board and everyone's got their own different unique spots in within the plan itself but uh it seems that way he kind of creates it on the spot right yeah so i would say okay Obviously, with I'm gonna say this is all, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak as if it's pre-COVID times because with COVID everything's a little bit changing. He doesn't know where everyone's coming from, especially new freshmen coming in, some transfers. Like we all have different backgrounds. So and I'll, and also um, I train with the pros, so we're kind of in a different spot than the college team. But I would say during the college season, so in September, October, November, we really stuck to kind of a a very I'd say week to week it was the same thing that we could expect so monday morning we'd be aerobic monday afternoon we'd be a little bit aerobic uh i would take I, my mornings um or monday wednesday friday you get to choose three mornings which i loved because it would allow me to be flexible with my school but i, I tried to stay consistent with monday wednesday friday um tuesday afternoon was always fast so we would do something fast maybe some broken 300s wednesday a little bit aerobic Thursday, a little bit of aerobic stroke. And then Friday we'd go fast again and then Saturday, a long swim. So 
usually we would know what to expect kind of like the gist of the practice, but mm. Eddie, yeah, Eddie is absolutely like the master of creating something on the spot in regards to like seeing where we are. Um, and I think he just has a good gauge and a good feel um, of each athlete. And also what that looks like is um, <laughs> it's funny because I asked him, I was like, Eddie, how much do you think I weighed when I was like the first week? Cause um, I was doing a lot of running when I was at home for quarantine and the first, uh, first day back, he's like, you probably weigh this. And then a couple weeks later, he's like, how much did you lose? I, mean, I was like, I asked him, I was like, Eddie, how much weight do you think I lost? Just kind of like reapportioning my muscles, right? And he's like, probably this amount. And he was absolutely right. He's just like, right. So I think he's just been in the game long enough to see, to know different body types, mm. um, see what each athlete needs. Um, and I mean, he's coached probably 40 plus years, right? So he, he, he knows what he's looking for in each athlete. Does Eddie give you any pre um, performance speeches or does he more kind of just set you up and let you go? Um, so as a team, yes, like we um, going into big 12s, like he wanted like really good efforts out of us. He knew that we weren't fully prepared, but he's like, this is kind of the, the, the prep meet for NCAA is I want you guys to be as sharp as you can, knowing that you're going to be even more, uh, ready to go at NCAAs, but want you to be sharp, want you to go kind of thing. So he talks with us there so that he can ensure honest efforts from us so he can evaluate, right? And we want to give that honest effort because if, say, I, I sandbag a swim, um, he's not going to get the best feedback, you know, um, and just seeing where my body is. Um, I would say individually, uh, he I think he knows um, – when kind of when to uh talk to me if I'm, I'm feeling really nervous or when not to but for the most part uh i think he trusts that he's gonna get an honest effort out of me uh i remember actually at minnesota invite um he'll, he'll so he'll say something to me like maxime um you're leading off the a free relay i don't want you to go out 43 and i end up going out 43 or something <laughs> but it, it's kind of funny because like i don't mean to do it but he says it jokingly so he know kind of expects it's gonna happen and I don't know if that's like a mind game or what, but he he just knows how to pull it out of me. So yeah, nice, nice. So, do you think you were ready to make the Olympic team if if it had happened a few months back? Yeah, I believe so, hundred percent. I I was training very well in the fall. Um, I was preparing for a great NCAA meet, and um, you know, following NCAA's, I was. I was ready to maybe take like a day off to get my school under handle and just get right back to work. And I think that the strength gains I made this year have, excuse me, helped me enormously. Um, not only in uh, how much like I'm holding in the water, but um, just the consistency and how long I'm able to hold it for. Um, my aerobic base has definitely increased being under Eddie. And uh, I just think like being with such a great training group um, has helped me race every day and give my best and given me the confidence that when I step behind the blocks, no matter what, like I'll be ready when I'm ready. Nice. Well, I mean, if you're ready to make the U S team, most athletes then move on to getting on the podium at the Olympics. What do you think your best shot would have been or, or, or will be next year, uh, to get on that podium? So, <laughs> um, I mean, I know for, for a fact, U S relays are very dominant. So, I could trust that if I was on those relays, we would medal. Um, individually, uh, I've always been the type of person that um, it's, I, I like this quote, it's like, what's the point of playing the game if you don't win it? Um, and yes, there's a level of like, uh, there's joy and like competitive and like just having fun for playing. But uh, at this level, it's like, well, I, I want to win. So I've never gone into a race thinking I want to get second place or third place. Um, if I race something, um, whatever events that may be, um, then I want to go give it my all and go for the dub. I, I like hearing that, man. That's good stuff. I'm, I'm glad you got I, that confidence. So I, I, that's what I usually like. I tell, I, that's what I try to tell my teammates too. Cause it's like, I, I don't like when someone in practice is like, Oh, Maxime, you're just gonna you're just gonna kill me, or like or something like that. And I'm like, why why would you say that to yourself before we're about to get on the blocks? Because first of all, that doesn't even give you the chance mentally to, like, okay, what do I need to do to to be successful in this race, right? And that totally places the focus on the other person, and that takes you out of your own lane. And one of the things that I'm trying to work on is just staying in my lane, doing the things that 
I know I need to do to be really fast. So um, that's what's helped me. And I also saw it in Kyle Chalmers' interview too. So I wanted to, I wanted to bring that up again. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, Kyle, Kyle talked about it. And look, the, the, the kind of the elephant in the room that most people don't like to talk about, especially competitors of Caleb, is, is you know, a lot of people think Caleb's unbeatable. And yet when I talk to some, some of his real competitors like you and Kyle Chalmers, I mean, you have an enormous belief in yourself. That's not taking away necessarily from, from Caleb, but you've been a teammate of his as well. Do you mm -hmm. think he's beatable or, or is he unbeatable? Absolutely. I mean, like, <clears throat> I don't necessarily, um, again, so I don't think of my, when I race someone, I don't really go into the race to thinking I'm like, oh, I'm going to beat a, a particular person. Sure. Um, I just, I want to see how, what I can pull the best, how I can pull the best out of myself and mm. use the people around me to pull that best. Sure. And so I, I think anyone is beatable on any day. Um, yeah, I was a teammate of Caleb's for the first two years because then he graduated. And so I've seen kind of like what he does really well in and, um, Again, like he's a phenomenal athlete. He's got um, a phenomenal athlete. Period. Like uh, I actually remember. I think one of the things I was when I was watching him one day, whether he was lifting or something, I was just like, if he didn't swim, he said he would be a track athlete, and I was like, he'd probably be like a world champ, Olympic athlete, track athlete, because mm -hmm. of just like how hard he works, his twitch. He's just incredibly explosive, and um, he's just got the drive. So. I think that, um, like, so he's a great athlete. Kyle Chalmers is a great athlete. Like I said, he played, he, I think he would have played footy. And it's like, I like to consider myself a great athlete too. Um, in regards to like, I, right now I'm, I'm on kind of a spike ball binge. I love playing spike ball with my teammates, but, uh, I would, I, would, I think if I didn't swim, I would play lacrosse or basketball. Um, so I just, I like, just kind of playing those sports and understanding that like kind of that athleticism, it, it will transfer over to swimming. Everyone thinks it doesn't, but it, it helps. So I guess that's the, the, the kind of moral to the story here, right? Like you have a great athlete in yourself. You have a great athlete in Carl Chalmers and Caleb Dressel, right? And all of a sudden these great athletes are going to meet at some point, right? And someone has to win and someone has to lose. And so you're saying, and I, I completely agree with you, you're saying the best way to put yourself in a winning position is to focus on yourself and what you can control and, and, and bringing out the best in yourself. It's not so much trying to beat Caleb or trying to beat Kyle, but allowing yourself to be free enough to say that that possibility is there. I can certainly do it if I concentrate on being the best version of myself. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, so you like, let's, let's say, not that I'm the middle ground at all, but you got a great, excellent sprinter in Caleb. He's a great 50, 100, and I think he, he can go up to the 200, but his 50, his first 50 is unbeatable in the 100. Mm -hmm. like, no, like everyone go, he's the, he's the first one at the feet, you know? And then you got a great second 50 in Kyle. So say I were to focus on like, okay, I want to beat Caleb going out. Then I would get beat by Kyle coming back, mm -hmm. right? Okay, say I want to go easy going out maybe i go too slow then and caleb already has a huge lead on me so it's just again like if i'm looking around at those two athletes if i'm looking around i mean even so like last year i think the world rankings were like this in the 100 free it was caleb it was kyle chalmers it was ryan held it was a uh, i don't remember the russian guy's name and then it was me mm -hmm. and we were top five and so i was like well if we have that top five heat you know like everyone's going to be swimming a different race strategy it's just again who's going to who's going to put their head down, get their hand on the wall first, that last 10. So I think it's absolutely about doing what's, what's going to be best for you. What's sure. going to put yourself in a position to win. You, you swam that. Yeah. I think you popped that 47, six. Is that what you went? 47, six. Yeah. So I went, I went 47, seven in the morning, 47, six at night. Yeah. Wow. What, what did that feel like? Fast. I was, I was really happy with it. I wanted to be, um, I, I knew I could be 47 because, um, I believe that I was, excuse me, I, I believe that I was going to be 47 the year before just because of my training and kind of all summer I was, I was doing some fifties here and there in practice. And I'm like, I'm, I'm up in the water. I'm like, I'm ready to go and jumping off that wall. Like again, I'm up in the water. And so I believe that with a shave, with a suit, good rest, um, I was there. And so I think it was just, it was just kind of about a belief there. Um, really taking charge of the heat. Um, cause if I, I watched my morning swim a lot, cause I think that's probably the race where 
I like my body position. I'm up in the water. I'm breathing really well. I have a good, I've got a good stroke rate. Um, and seeing how I kind of mentally took charge of that heat, I was just like, go. And so kind of keeping that in mind, kind of moving forward. That's, that's what I like to keep. Nice. Do you remember your splits on that 47.6? Yeah. So, for, okay. Actually, so for my 47.7 was 22.6 to the, no, sorry. Yeah. 22.6 to the feet. Uh-huh. My 47.6 was 22.8 or 22.9 to the feet. Um, okay. Yeah. And then, and then you're, you're coming back. What'd you, what'd you come home in? So, so I was 22, eight or 22, nine. And then I was, I was 24, eight, 24, okay. nine. And okay. then I was 22, six and that's so 22, six to 25. Oh, so, so you want to win, you want to yeah. win, you want to be, you want to be at the top of the podium, but the reality of that is you got to find 0.7, let's say, you know, right? you know, you go from 47, six to somewhere around the world record. That's where those guys are going to be in order to, to get that win. So, taking them out of the equation and just understanding the time itself, where do you find the point seven? Yeah, absolutely. So I think for me, I, I got a lot of room to, to improve on in my, in my strength. Um, and just kind of look based on my logbook, I've definitely increased my, my strength um, and muscle mass in the last year. I've gotten leaner as well. Um, so I, I'm happy with my, my body, my physical progress. I mean, I think it just goes back to kind of, uh, just working hard, getting my kick rate fast, um, doing the right things, find maybe finding an extra tweak here and there, making my t- my turn tight, um, making my start explosive, and so I would just say over, uh, just overall improvement. That's how I like to improve. Just focus on on kind of every detail of my race and making. So you're it looking at finding maybe like a, a few tenths on the front end and a few tenths on the back end, and, and there's your point seven kind of thing. Well, of course, and so I mean, I would even say. Um, like looking at my 47 six at night because i'm trying to i'm visualizing my race right now because I, i've watched it so many times i can i have the camera angle that my parents view it from uh my i, I would say right off the back i can my my flip my flip turns probably three times oh, okay. so uh then just front speed um back end speed uh i think everyone everyone can always be better the last 10 and that how you, how you do that is um either you get a little bit more oxygen up front in the first 50 or coming off the third 25, you back off your tempo a little bit. Yes, you, you shoot through the breakout, but you don't take a couple hard strokes so you can build into it, you know? And that's what I saw. That's why also I, I, was listening to, I was listening to Kyle's interview because I was like, does he have a strat that I don't yet? <laughs> um, and, of course, I, I think you can learn from every athlete. So I love watching that race film because I see what he does. I see what Kale does. I watched the, my 100 free because I saw what Ryan does because he Ryan held 147.3 for him, his time to be third in the world. So – just do you want to be prepared for everything? Uh, I don't want to be in the race and I'm like, why is everyone over here? Like they're, they're ahead of me. So um, yeah, just, just, just kind of studying. Listen, man, I've had Kyle Chalmers. I've had Eamon Sullivan. I've had Michael Klim. I've had Alex Popov. I've had, you know, I've had some of the world's greatest hundred freestylers on the podcast and that's it, man. It's like, it's, yeah. it, they're telling you kind of, bits and pieces you get something from everybody you know and i think that's yeah. what i love about my podcast is people are going to listen to you now and be like okay yeah there's, there's some stuff that i can learn there and and maybe put into my own stuff so i'm, I'm enjoying doing the podcast and sharing the information because it's it's cool you guys are being really open but at the same time you're competitive man you want it you want to be yeah. the best and, and i think that's the mm. thing that i'm finding the similarities on all of you is that you're all super competitive but you're not there's no, there's nothing you're trying to hide at the same time. It's like your strengths are your strengths, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's, it's funny. So, um, actually when I was in high school, uh, my, one of my club coaches talked about Alexander Popov all the time mm. because he was, I, I would say he's more of the model hundred freestyle that I think a lot of people like they go out fast, but he, I mean, he would almost even split the race, you yeah, know, yeah. like he was the first one going under 25. Yeah. So, and that was just an unreal leg drive. And of course, like he had, he had great physical features. He had like a huge wingspan and everything, but he, um, yeah, I, uh, I think I watched one of his races and he was like 24, eight on the back end. Right. And I'm like, that's the direction of like the world. You know, if you're, if you're not under 25, you're, you have no shot of winning. Yeah. Just, I'm just, yeah. I, I don't mean that to be an anti negative to anyone. No. I mean, maybe you can go out 21, six and go 25. Oh, but like, mm. that's really hard. And also that's a 3.4 second spread and that's not realistic. Yeah, so no, I think, usually uh, uh, Santo Clinarelli like tried 7. that. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, again, so, I mean, that's just like, I, I know. Um, so actually speaking of Santo, I watched his, I think one of his first times uh, he went 47 in 2015, it was at uh, winter nationals in Washington and he was training under Coley for a little bit. And I, I was in his heat or I watched the morning swim and I watched him go that 47 and I'm like, this dude's fast on the way out, mm. right? He's just fast. And so he's got great twitch. And I mean, again, that's what works for him. Like he, he can go that 47. Um, but I think like the prime spot for numbers is like, I would say probably like 1.6 to 2.3 spread and from the first to second 50. That, is that right? Like, do you, know, do you know the numbers there? No, I don't know it exactly. No. Okay. Cause well, I was thinking like, if I go, so say like, Actually, that's probably not right. So, if I, so say I go like, I, well, actually, Caleb swims it. He went out twenty-two, two to the feet, mm -hmm. and then he was twenty, twenty-four, six, six twenty-four, yeah. seven. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a two point five spread. Yeah, um, I mean, again, they say ideally, they say ideally, you want to be right at kind of the two seconds, you know. Yeah. So if you're out in twenty-three oh, you want to come back at twenty-five oh, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of twenty-two oh, twenty-four, yeah. you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, I know Kyle is more on the 1.6, 1.8 spread because his second 50 is phenomenal. Yeah. And true, that true. last 15 meters, 15 meters, he just grinds that kick. So. Well, he's got room to improve on the, on the front end though. He can't let yeah. Caleb get that far ahead of him and expect to win the race. You know, he, mm -hmm. you're not, you're not pulling back a full body length on Caleb, but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses. And so it, it's good to analyze all that. But um, I know that you're uh you're looking at swimming, uh, ISL professional swimming. Is that official yet? Are you allowed to announce where you're going? Um, so I'm not allowed to announce, but I, I am participating. <laughs> Good. Um, I know. I'm, I'm hoping that the season happens because I, I think it's going to be a great opportunity five to six week camp just to train, kind of put my head down, race hard. Uh, obviously they've announced Budapest is beautiful. Um, and, uh, I'm still in school. So, I luckily for me, I know my team, my schedule, and it's non-conflicting. So I'll be able to um, really be present with my school, and I don't think that's going to sacrifice any time from training because I'll I'll have access to a weight room, I'll have access to a pool. I'm thinking about bringing a couple extra equipment here and there, but uh, I'm I'm really excited. I think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, man, it's phenomenal. And uh, just swimming ISL alone, I think you've made the right choice. You know, getting in there and it's super competitive. You're going to be around all the top guys in the world and gonna get a lot of racing and um just have a lot of fun with it you know it really takes you back to why you why you swim you know we all love competition and that's what it is it's really based mm -hmm. around competition and uh, it's very much like a dual meet you know you, you go auburn georgia or auburn florida or you know auburn texas a dual meet you know they're some of the most fun dual meets you can have and it's kind of the same kind of context so yeah good choice doing that and i think it'll set you up well for for next summer as well Thank you. Yeah, that's, I was actually, um, so in, in saying, like, I'm very excited. I remember, um, like, the day after I signed, um, I, I texted my GM, and I'm like, I went to practice today. I was so excited. Here are my times, because I ripped, I was, like, ripping practice, and I was like, I did, like, this 150, 100, and a 50, and I was, like, I was cooking, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm getting ready to go, so just training, I, I'm happy to have a focus too. I heard about that practice. It's a good one. Um, <laughs> give me, give me a, one of your favorite sets. Give me, a, give me a workout that you've done that you just really memorable for you that you feel like sets you up really well. Oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna give you like so this week. I'll give you a workout that I had this week. Sure. Um, because it was uh, actually the first time the pros got to use the outdoor pool. So oh, that's that the new Eddie Reese uh, outdoor yep. complex. Oh. Yeah. So uh, we did. We warmed up, um, just kind of got our legs ready, and then we did three 100s all out on five minutes. I did four 75s all out on four minutes, and then we did four 50s because we ran out of time. We were supposed to do six, but four 50s with bins all out. And um, I, all from a push, no suit. Um, it's 45 one, 45 five, and hurt a little bit on the last one because my leg locked up, but I was 46 six. Um, mm. Nice. And then on the 75s, I was around 36s, 37s for butterfly. It felt good, felt strong at least. Not too, not putting the gas on too much, but just keeping my hips up. Because like I said, I've been focusing on keeping my my neck and my spine in line so I can mm -hmm. keep moving it forward. Um, I've noticed for myself, like 
I don't, um, I like doing quality fly in practice. And if I do longer fly, like a, a hundred or 200, um, my legs definitely drop and my core fatigues just because of the weightlifting pretty much. Yeah. Um, so just kind of keeping that sharp. And then for my fifties, I was, um, I did the IM order with fins. I, I was 19 something, eight, 18 or 19 something for backstroke, 21 something for breaststroke, and then uh, 18 something for freestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember too much of the tents, but that was my practice this week. I love doing kind of those types of anaerobic efforts because I just feel like, okay, it's time to go. Just like pedal to the metal, foot on the gas, let's go, just give it best. Um, but one of the practices I think I absolutely love with Eddie, um, it's a fast practice, of course. Um, it's broken 300s. He does it in a way where um, there's probably three or four groups that go. Um, so one group goes and they do a 150, um, and that's maybe on 150. Um, and then we go 350s on probably 40, 40 45. And basically, you want to be quick on the 150 and then you want to kind of cook those 50s and we descend one to three and then hold number four. Um, I used to go all freestyle for that. Uh, probably start around the last time I did it was 116, 117 and end around maybe 111, 112, holding maybe 23s on the, on the, on the, uh, on the fifties. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'm a big, I like, I like doing just, fast work. I, I like aerobic sets too. Um, I love pulling, but those are my main ones. Cool. So. Love it, man. Well, I appreciate you sharing a couple of those with us. I'm, I'm sure people will be doing those sets in the future once they hear, hear about them. <laughs> so. I think so. They've been on like, uh, I think we've had like a practice in pancakes with uh, Col like, uh, Coleman. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. practice in pancakes, dude. Cool. Yeah. Very so. cool. Awesome. I'm blanking on his name. <laughs> well, listen, man, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy and uh, just a um, big fan of yours. Looking forward to your, your international uh, swim league debut and then into, into next year, man, is one of the favorites. And uh, I'll be keeping Thank a close you. eye on you, all right? Cool. Thanks, Brett. It was really yeah. great talking with you. Good seeing you, too. So, yeah, you too, man. And good luck, Thanks. good luck again to your swimmer. Appreciate it, buddy. Take care. Cool. All right. Bye. See you later.